Introducing the OnePlus Buds Pro 2, the ultimate wireless earbuds for your audio needs. With advanced noise cancellation technology, superior sound quality, and a comfortable customizable fit, these earbuds are designed to elevate your listening experience to new heights. Stay connected all day with long-lasting battery life and enjoy seamless pairing with your OnePlus devices. Whether you're working, exercising, or just enjoying your favorite tunes, the OnePlus Buds Pro 2 have got you covered. Get ready to experience audio like never before. Right, if you thought I was a shill before, yeah, chatbots have got me beat, I'll tell you what. But make no mistake guys, we're definitely looking at the OnePlus Buds Pro 2 today, full review, and just for fun, I brought along the Soundcore Liberty 4. These two are more alike than you think and more than these two companies dare to admit, but we're gonna compare these a little bit and see how the OnePlus handles it at the end of the day. So if you're curious, let's find out after these messages that way. <laughs> Let's start with performance, in particular noise cancellation. It's good, but not class leading. I'll rank this probably in the top five for the price range, but it's definitely behind the Liberty 4 in terms of overall noise cancellation performance. I got to test these at the Portland airport over spring break, and I'd say it's good at dulling out low to mid frequencies, but for some reason, conversations come through more so than any other brand I've experienced, even ones that cost way less. It behaves almost like pass-through mode light, if you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like half noise cancellation and half ambient mode coming through, and it's a weird effect. And I hope it's fixable or tweakable in some future firmware update. So OnePlus, listen up. Battery life is another area where these are good, but not necessarily mind-blowingly excellent. For example, with active noise cancellation on media playing at 65% volume, I managed 6.4 hours and that's actually above the factory estimate, but it's still kind of on the lower end for devices this price. Now, adding Leduc to the mix drops that even more at 4.9 hours before giving up the ghost, but that's really on par with other high-res activated devices. But both of these numbers are still a step behind the Liberty 4, for what it's worth. Yes. I have the new DJI Action 3 here as my new walk around camera. I'm thinking of keeping this. Let me know down in the comments as you start watching this segment whether I should keep it or not. Uh, but anyways, we're out here doing the Bluetooth range test for the Pro 2s. And if you haven't listened to Megan Trainer's I Made You Look, it came out in October last year. I still started listening to it. It's so fun. It's such an awesome, fun, short song. But even with nothing on, but I made you look. Yeah, I, I love it. Anyways, um, I have the song playing through the OnePlus, the OnePlus 11, so it's optimized between the two products, right? So it should perform the best. I have uh, it sitting, uh, playing on my phone right there, and I'm going to walk around the back end of my house towards the side, and we'll see when these start getting signal cutouts. So where I'm standing right now is around 25 feet, um, and we should, once we start hitting that window right there, we'll get a cutout. It. Yep, right here, as expected, right on spec. So nice job, OnePlus. I'm gonna keep walking just for fun or running to see if we get a signal cut out. So right there we have the whole house around now, right now around uh, 60 feet between the phone and the house, a uh, phone in here, there's a house separating it. Yeah, nothing at this point, but no tone, so that's strange. Um, sorry about the exposure issues too. I'm still figuring out the, the exposure controls on this, whether it's to lock it or whatever. If you have any experience with the Action 3 or GoPros in general, what kind of setting should I use? It's kind of halfway in between cloudy and sunny, so it's kind of a contest right there. Thank you for being here. You can see the fit of these in my ears, really nice and compact. I'm back in range and nothing is playing, so... Oh, I just got a tone. Um, and does media continue? No. Sometimes they do. So you can see the fit of these in my ears, super compact. I love this. They sit halfway out the ear, not jammed right into your ear canal. Really, really comfortable. I'm gonna run with these. And you can see it's muddy because it's uh, spring rain season. Soon to be followed by mosquitoes and horseflies here in Maine. My goodness. 
wow super super stable super comfortable i wouldn't wear these for a long jog i can feel you know eventually they will be there is some slight pressure on my ear uh ear canal uh but otherwise uh, for light workouts if you're just you know using this on a treadmill it's perfection so oh it looks like there's there was a raccoon that i tried to dig up right here yeah i've had issues we've had issues where the raccoon would just climb up. you can see probably the paw prints there on the pole they will climb up to the top knock over my camera a little bit and then climb to the rooftop uh Anyways, just found out that was fun. Let's head out to the front and test the mic on these. So I've been testing these indoors and outdoors for a couple of weeks now in terms of phone calls. And as you're about to hear in a second, uh, the noise suppression on these outdoors when you're, when it's asked to do any kind of work. Yeah, my voice gets, gar not garble, gets cut off. Some words it mistaken for noise and you know, and it's not that great. Indoors, it's also okay. Intonation, my bass, it's all right, but not the best I've heard. So OnePlus has some work there. It's not the worst either, so uh, bear that in mind. You can definitely take this on the road. You know, the chat and talk, but uh, there are a lot of caveats to the sound quality. Another thing I noticed too, and I've mentioned this in previous videos as well, is when you get phone calls, if you have noise cancellation on previously, it doesn't cut to pass-through mode. And I like that when earbuds do that. Because it's, to me, it's a great safety feature. Because say, if you're walking on a road right there, talking or just trying to cross the street or in a parking lot, and you get a phone call, you're so wound up in a conversation. And if you don't hear what you're, what's going on in your surroundings, it poses as a safety issue, right? So. I like it when pass-through mode comes on. Anyways, here comes more cars testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. Comment down below what you think about these. Thank goodness these are not earwax diggers, guys. They don't sit so far in your ear canals that it feels like you're being violated every time you sneeze, you know what I'm talking about? And it helps that the controls are also on the stem, not like touch controls on the side where you're jamming it deeper in your ear. So I've been able to wear these for three to four hours straight comfortably, which is really rare for stem style design. I usually am just wearing those for an hour before I start hurting. And for light workouts, these are perfectly fine as well. The silicone tips are comfortable and they're supportive. I really like these. About 15 years ago, I owned a jet black Volvo C70 with an optional Dyne Audio sound system. It had 12 bloody speakers in 1997, guys, and I remembered it sounding fantastic, almost as good as Lexus Mark Levinson's of the time. Now, one characteristic of that car, plus most vehicles with Dyne audio packages since then, as corroborated by other reviewers, was the emphasis on bass, sometimes overpoweringly so. And that apparently is a Dyne audio trait. So apparently, like the pastries, the Danes like them thick and heavy. Yes. Which brings us to the Pro 2. If you haven't been paying attention, it's also been largely tuned and developed by Dyne Audio also. So let's talk about how that affects sound quality. And you can probably already guess where I'm going with this. But apparently it has split the inner web in terms of what people think about it. Some have really positive experiences like myself, while some absolutely didn't. Some hated the vocals or the bass or even both. Therefore, as I've been testing this, I've been cracking my head trying to figure out why the Pro 2 has split their camp so decisively down the middle. And then it dawned on me that we've gotten this all wrong, or at least some of us have, even OnePlus has in its marketing and all that. So here's what's happening. The Pro 2 is being sold as an audiophile device, you know, between, and understandably so, between the tuning by Dyne Audio and Hans Zimmer, the dual, yes, that Hans Zimmer, the dual 11 and 6 mil drivers dedicated to low and mid high range coverage, and also the Leduc high res codec support. Make no mistake guys, based on the bass centricness of the sound profile, it's audiophile in the looser sense, but this is the mindset that OnePlus has planted in our heads in terms of marketing. So when I tested the Pro 2 with that particular mindset, I felt these pair or this pair sounded amazing in certain genres like jazz, rock, and also light pop. The drivers handled songs that didn't rely on low frequencies or that dipped into sub bass often with maturity and aplomb. It was really nice. Under 10% volume, it felt underpowered, but anything from there to max was tight, very composed. On the other hand, the buds fell apart disappointingly whenever you pull up rap or EDM. Man, I don't know what it is, but that bass becomes one clumpy, undetailed mess with rumble that you can feel, but you can't hear. It's really hard to understand or describe. 
Using the Year Customizer Audio ID thingamajig did lift things up a little bit, but more in the mids and mid highs. So where does my point about the we've got this thing all wrong come in? Well, when I decided to see the Pro 2 not as an audiophile-like device, but as a home theater in your ears, did I begin to see how awesome these are or they potentially can be? If you ever own one of these guys, do yourself a favor, pull up some Atmos movies or 5.1.2 test videos on YouTube, and it's crazy to think how well these tiny earbuds can simulate Adobe Atmos with a compatible OnePlus phone at least. Uh, when playing music, just normally, the soundstage and imaging are well calculated, they're good, basically. But with Atmos supported media, I'll tell you what, it just flips everything around. You feel like you're at the cinema. Center row, center column, the best seats in the house. Man, spatial audio. In of itself, it's still a hit or miss for me, unfortunately. The IMU sensors sometimes can get tricked up when uh, what with what orientation in space my head is. I experience and complain about the same thing with the Liberty 4. Um, when audio or spatial audio does work between the two models, the Pro 2 performs better but only by a small margin. Hands down, one of my favorite bits of the Pro 2 is the design. I love it, love it guys. It has a dual tone outer shell for the earbuds, a gratefully short stem, and the case. Oh man, case in point, there's no wasted space on the case in this case. I mean, check out the side profile. It's thin, it's great to hold in the hand, wireless charging as well, great grip. It's also easy to slide in your tight jeans pocket. The earbuds sit snugly in their cavity. Matte plastics too, thank you very much. Easy to clean. And also the shake test proves that the magnets are not weak sauce, so thumbs up. <laughs> A couple more things I wanna talk about. Using buttons on the stems instead of touch or gestures for controlling the Pro 2 is a great idea. It's my kind of thing because A, they're just more reliable, way less finicky. B, they work with sweaty fingers during workouts or greasy fingers after you've been wrist deep in a bucket of KFC. And C, this is crucial for those in colder climates, buttons work with gloves, guys. Yeah. The second thing I want to talk about, borrowing a page from Apple and Samsung it seems like OnePlus limits access to features such as Ladakh and Atmos and spatial audio behind OnePlus devices specifically. And I understand why they do that, but I don't agree with such agnostic practices. You know what I like to call the OnePlus Buds Pro 2 as well as the Soundcore Liberty 4? They're the let's throw everything we can except the kitchen sink and see what sticks type of earbuds. Now, in terms of execution, the overall winner goes to the OnePlus. But really, at the end of the day, who really needs posture minders or heart rate trackers like on the Soundcore? If you look at the price just by itself, I give the win to the Soundcore Liberty 4. I think it's $60 less, if I remember correctly, on Amazon. Spatial audio is really kind of turd on it, although its sound tuning is more respectful of more genres than the Pro 2. So I say this, guys. Try both if you can and let your years do the deciding. I'm personally curious to see what the Liberty 4 Pro brings to the table later this year, so subscribe and get notified when I drop that review. With all that said, the OnePlus Buds Pro 2 gets a gear up score of 8.6 out of 10, and this is how I broke it down to get to the final score. If you have any questions about how I got there, feel free to comment down below. Thank you for watching this episode of Gear Up with Aaron. We hope you found our review of the OnePlus Buds Pro 2 helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll do our best to respond to them. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on our latest gear reviews and outdoor adventures. Until next time, stay safe and keep exploring.